Hi everybody, my name is Bass and I'm here today to talk about the upcoming battery mineral market and American Battery Technology Company. Everything you hear today is my opinion. I am not a financial advisor and you should not make any decisions based off of my opinions. So in my opinion, American Battery Technology Company addresses the intersection of three major problems facing uh, the battery production process. So one, there's not gonna be enough minerals Two, the United States of America is going to be over-reliant on foreign entities, and that's going to cause a national security threat. And three, the, it's a costly and inefficient supply chain right now for battery production, where nickel has to go all the way around the world, and lithium's coming from all different types of countries. And so there is innovation to be seen. So... Some of the information that I like to think about when investing in a company is the broad sense, the macro information, and some things I've put down. I'm, I'm not going to address them all. I'm going to do my best to address some of these questions in here, but I want you to think about some, the questions if I have not addressed them. What does the battery market size look like in 10 years? What does it mean for recycling? Why haven't we always been recycling batteries? Is it just a social impact purpose of recycling? Is it profitable to recycle? What is the level of negative environmental impact in battery creation process, you know, with mining and things like that? And smelting batteries for recycling, what's the negative environmental impact in that? I didn't want you to think about that. And making batteries takes a long time. It could take two years for a brine pool to start producing. The supply chain is very complex, as I said, nickel traveling all around the world before it's in a battery, and strategic concerns of the United States not, uh, the United States relying on themselves for mineral production. So um, when I think about investing in American Battery Technology Company, I think about how much money can ABTC make from recycling, what's their defensible no moat. Why start now if battery recycling won't be impactful until after the market ramp up of the S curve? You know, when we go from an S curve to a linear scale. Why should I invest in recycling when I could invest in mining? I'm going to talk about that. Why is it possible for American Battery Technology Company to take the market share? Or at least what's going to be possible? So... ABTC is addressing the mineral supply problem. We're going to have a large imbalance of minerals for batteries in the coming future. Benchmark Mineral Intelligence gave a government summit report where they're saying that there's going to be an imbalance, a negative uh, deposits of minerals or a, a negative um, amount of minerals ready for use so that means we don't have them but this is how much we need and they're not even taking into account tesla's demand which is outsizing their their um, projections so lithium there's going to be a negative in 2023 2022 cobalt which won't be used in the 4680s is still probably going to be used in all other types of lithium-ion batteries. The nickel market, there's going to be a balance, but still not a taking into account Tesla's requirements, which the 4680s are heavy nickel-based. And graphite, I'm not so concerned about because American Battery Technology Company, for American Battery Technology Company, because essentially you have to synthesize them or mine them raw. They're not so easy to recycle. But it's still something to think about that it's going to be pretty negative in balanced terms. So there's a huge demand for rare earth minerals and battery creation. This is a conservative estimate on the left from Benchmark Minerals of the gigawatt hours of yearly battery production for all types of different um, vehicles in the sense of different areas of requirements so you have stationary storage and consumer electronics and passenger evs commercial evs they're expecting in 2030 to need two terawatt hours one terawatt hour is equal to a thousand gigawatt hours of battery production but we have here on the right tesla saying that we're going to need 
three terawatt hours alone of battery production. And so there's a huge deficit and there's a mismatch going on. And ABTC is trying to address this mismatch. Another thing I want you to think about is the world energy. So on, we use on the order of petawatt hours per year. And batteries have a life cycle or a, a cycle time of life. So you charge it and discharge it and charge it and discharge it of a few thousand cycles. Um, that's optimistically. But we will get to a point where we will be able to produce terawatt hours of batteries per year. And in addition, they'll be able to charge and discharge multiple thousands per year. And this store, stationary storage is going to be really large. I think this is conservative. And we're going to be able to take dozens of percent of the total world energy. That's something to think about. Of just batteries in addition to passenger EVs, etc. And basically usurping the current process of energy production in the world stage. So I talked about before the S curve. Let's say this graph starts in 2019. Well, then we're about here. We're starting to see if you overlay Tesla's production of cars, an S curve forming. And it's of my opinion that when you get to this stage, battery recycling is going to be the utmost importance to stop the, or to not need to mine anymore. It's not to say that there's no, there's no money to be made in these years. There's plenty of money to be made. But it's going to be absolutely important to be able to be ready for when the offtake of batteries from end-of-life uh, use in these years. And I think ABTC is poised to set themselves up to take the market share, a large market share here, because they're starting so early. So, again, I talked about the nickel atom going all over the world before it's ready to be used in a cell. Well, lithium has the same aspects. It's mined in South America and China and Australia, and then finally gets made into a cathode uh, along with nickel. Um, and Elon Musk said on Battery Day, it's a small world journey of I am a nickel atom. What happens to me? And it's crazy. You're going around the world three times before you're ready to be made in the cell. And so how do we stop this process? Well, you have to start with battery recycling and uh, regional areas of this pro of deconstruction, battery deconstruction. So where is the use? Where is the batteries coming from? That's what I'm going to talk about. The coming wave of used batteries. Well, the World Economic Forum here posted this chart of all of the different consumer electronics and power tools and electric cars that have been made in the past few years, and there's plenty of feedstock. This has been accumulation period. So ABTC says they can recycle the gamut of batteries. Uh, they could go from pouch cells and modules and packs to metal scraps and slurries and powders, and this was from the shareholder letter. And they can use all types of cathode chemistries in their recycling process. Lithium cobalt oxide, lithium nickel cobalt aluminum oxide, lithium nickel cobalt manganese, manganese aluminum oxide, etc. And the throughput of the system is very fast, leading to a high total output of battery recycle. So they want to start with 20,000 tons per year of batteries. That's going to only lead up to like, you know, 1,500 tons of lithium but there's still all the other minerals you have to remember and that's where it's very lucrative and the point here is that there's been an accumulation period of batteries so where are the batteries coming from well we've already made a lot of them and that's the point so BASF is projecting their estimates of the millions of metric tons available uh, up until 2030 from 100,000 tons of material in 2018 to 
1.6 million metric tons of material in 2030. And so they're preparing for this coming wave of used batteries. And I think that's not something to, to ignore. So I believe recycling can be a solution to immediately increase battery feedstock. It allows for the immediate increase of available cathode precursing material. It avoids two years of the brine process and having brine pools. And so if you look up what it means to produce lithium and you see how long it takes, this speeds up the process and avoids environmental uh, impacting. And the economics of recycled feedstock are not impacted by current commodity prices like virgin feedstock, enabling pricing and output stability both to recyclers and customers. And as a shareholder, that's really important to me because that means we're going to have a predictable amount of income. That's my opinion. Um, and as I said, 20,000 metric tons per year. The speed of the process is three hours. Ryan mentions, it, mentions that in this video uh, around the 14-minute mark, so you can hear him talk about that. I won't be able to do it justice. So... Is ABTC profitable? Well, historically, hydrometallurgical lithium ion recycling has been a non starter because it's expensive. You have to consume and waste a lot of water. You have to keep pumping the water into the system. You use a lot of acids because you have to keep buying your acids. You have to hire a bunch of workers to push the batteries through the system. So, how do you automate that system? How do you close the loop on acid use and water use? It's slow. This huge multi-million dollar facility called Lifecycle, you know, they said that they could handle like 5,000 tons per year. And they got an investment of $175 million for a hub and a spoke system. And so for all these reasons, um, you have to pay the recycler to take your batteries. Well, what ABTC say, is saying is that they're going to be extract all these minerals and sell them back to the battery cathode manufacturers for a high dollar value because lithium costs fifteen thousand dollars per ton cobalt costs like thirty thousand dollars per ton and abtc's system is closed loop they use reuse the water they reuse the acid they generate their own acid it only takes a few hours to go through the system and so how does the system work well ryan can talk to you more about that but in general, it's going to be like $3,500 per ton to produce the black mass. And they're going to be able to, let's say, take that um, money and then create phase two. You know, so I, I really don't know when these, these time frames are. You have to wait on the company. And I'm just giving you an idea. Um, but essentially, this part of the system makes the black mass. This part of the system produces the... Nickel sulfate, cobalt sulfate, manganese sulfate, lithium hydroxide. And it shows you how they're going to reuse the acid and reuse the water. And that stuff is really important to understand. So this is BASF's process where they're saying that they're going to create lithium hydroxide and nickel cobalt manganese sulfate. So these are the same chemistries that Ryan's talking about. They're going to have 30,000 kilotons, or excuse me, 30,000 tons. And they're going to have one kiloton of lithium hydroxide, 10 kilotons in the form of um, nickel, cobalt, manganese, sulfate. I don't know about all these numbers. I'm going to take it for their word. But if you do the math and you look up the price per ton, you can understand where the money is coming from. So lastly, this is China's uh, share of the market. The the mining market and the chemical refining market and the cathode and anodes, why are they... The, the point is, is we have to understand how to make the market share of these different areas back in the United States. And so you see some of these orders and Green New Deals coming out and they're overlapping the materials that battery minerals would be used with. And so there's a bipartisan strategic effort of securing the supply chain. And so American Battery Technology Company is poised to take the share of 
this um, focus. And so I trust the team. You have to look up Ryan Mouser and Menka Sethi and David Batstone and Chuck Lieber and just look at their team in general, look at their background, and I think they're poised for success. I want to thank you for watching my video. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment below and I will try to address them. Thank you very much and you have a great year.